Welcome to the Jordan and Kristen Rickard Show. The world is falling apart, but you don't have to. Join Jordan and Kristen as they discuss the challenges that face us in our decaying world every day. God has a plan for you to have victory and to be a light in the darkness. As the Bible says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now, here's Jordan and Kristen. All right, guys, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Jordan and Kristen Pray For You. It's good to see you guys. I've always thought it was weird when people on TV would say that because they clearly couldn't see us, but now I'm saying it. Um, <laughs> well, we can see them because of their comments. We can see them. That's true. Technically. All right, we'll go with that. Hey, listen, guys, before we get to Kristen's prayer, which I'm sure is going to be extraordinary, i got a really important topic I want to talk to you about. And the title of tonight's message is A Fool Says There Is No God. Okay. A few years ago, my uncle passed away. I was very close with him. And I remember when he was in the hospital, we didn't know, had no reason to know that he was sick. And he went to the hospital one day and in a really serious condition, basically on the verge of death. I mean, we were told basically that uh, there wasn't a lot that anyone could do and pretty much to expect the worst. And it came as a shock. And one of the ways I deal with such things is I try to understand more about what's happening because it makes me feel like I'm in control. He was dying from renal failure. His kidneys weren't working. And so I went on to WebMD and I was trying to understand the kidneys, the renal system, how it works and what its function is. And I, I really gave myself a pretty good education on the topic and it did make me feel better. But what amazed me is just how complicated it is. I mean, and that's just that's just one system. You have no idea. It's the, the most advanced filtration system ever developed. And we just we just take it for granted. And I looked at this thing and I just saw this in, incredible design of, of really irreducible complexity. And I thought, how could anybody look at something like this? Look at this incredibly intricate machine and not realize that it had to have come from a designer. That there has to be a God who created it. Now, I mentioned this because the other day I heard Joyce Myers and I love Joyce Myers. I do. But it doesn't mean I have to agree with a thousand percent of the things she says. And what she said was, she heard that 75% of Christian kids who go to college wind up losing the faith. And she surmised it's because we don't prepare them for what, from what to expect. And she was talking about how colleges bombard kids with science and reason, as though those are enemies of Christianity. And I don't think she's right. I think actually what's happening is she's falling into a trap that atheists set, where they establish themselves on the side of reason and Christians on the side of the superstitious. And that's the real problem. We aren't able to equip these kids or ourselves to defend theism and Christianity on a rational basis. We've gotten intellectually lazy, okay? Too many of us think that Christianity is about exercising faith in the, in the face of evidence. Why do I believe in God? Well, I have faith. Why do I believe Jesus was the son of God? I have faith. But I don't think that's right. Even though that's a common assumption, I don't think that's right. Faith is a, a, a critical component of Christianity, yes, but it comes into our relationship with God, not whether or not he exists. Having faith means we trust that God cares about us, that he has a plan for us to give us a hope and a future. That's faith. But whether or not God exists is a scientific question. It's, it's a rational question. Whether or not he had a son, that's another rational question. And both of these points need to be defined defended on a rational basis, especially because the quantum of evidence tells us that, yes, there is a God, and yes, he had a son. In fact, I can't see anywhere in the Bible where we are asked to believe that God exists against all evidence. If anything, Paul says in Romans 1.20 that people who don't believe in God are without excuse because God, through the evidence of his creation, makes his existence known to us. That's not a faith statement. He's saying, look at the evidence. Peter in 1 Peter 3 clearly says we need always to be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks for a reason for the hope that we have. Emphasis on the word reason. We need to use reason. We can't just say we have hope, therefore we have faith, because that's circular. We need to explain why we have hope, why we have faith. In fact, the Bible actually says in Psalms 14, a fool says in his heart there is no God. In other words, the Bible literally calls atheists stupid. It's actually saying if you don't believe in God, you're a moron. It doesn't say they lack faith. It says they're idiots. Okay, we're on the side of reason. They're on the side of idiocy. Okay, this is not a minor point. 
We're losing the battle to secularism and atheism. We need to realize that all of us are called to be apologists, to understand why we believe what we do, and to be able to explain it. Now, look, atheists will say, all right, look, fine. Believing in God was fine for thousands of years ago or even hundreds of years ago because back then people didn't have a great science and they needed kind of a way to explain things that they couldn't. And so they attributed anything they couldn't understand to there being a God. But now we have science and we understand how everything works, so we don't need God anymore. And what they're doing is they're putting atheism on the side of science and reason. But nothing could be less reasonable and more irrational and anti-scientific than to think that something can come from nothing, that a universe that exhibits intricate design down to the atom could have possibly come into being without a designer. In fact, the more our sciences advance, the more we see these intricacies and the precision and detail that goes into even the smallest things. And we can't help but conclude that there was a designer. I was telling Kristen not long ago about a video I saw on YouTube, and it was from this company called DARPA. And if you don't know what DARPA is, it's actually a defense contractor, okay? It makes really, really advanced weapons and systems for the United States military. And in this video, they were showing this robot that they created, like it was a life-size humanoid robot. It had a head and a body and arms and legs and everything. And it could stand on its two legs and it could walk and it could it could even climb up a few blocks of stairs, okay? And, and if you put an obstacle in front of it, it would see the obstacle and it would actually walk around it. And it could even be programmed to pick up a box. OK, it in short, it was doing a lot of things that were really amazing for a robot, which we take for granted because we do it very easily. OK, now this robot represented the height of human intelligence and development. Millions of man hours went into developing this thing. I mean, all of our science for thousands of years comes into the creation of this thing, whether it's gyroscopes and microchips and and, and the vision systems and the power system that go into it. This is the height of intelligent design. And yet it is completely rudimentary compared to our bodies, which by far and away are the most complex machines ever developed. And so if we know that that rudimentary robot had to have been created by intelligent designers, how much more than must the most complex machines ever have to have been created by an intelligent designer? All right. So the point is this, faith is important to our lives, but the issue of whether or not God exists should be answered rationally and in the affirmative, in the affirmative. And the question of whether or not he had a son, keep in mind, there's a reason we have a written account of it. We're asked to review this written account. It's called the New Testament of the Bible and assess the credibility of its authors, keeping in mind that almost all of those people were put to death. And the reason they had to suffer those deaths is so that they would have credibility with us, with future generations. They didn't get rich telling about Christ. They got killed. So if they knew they were facing death for telling about Christ and they had nothing to gain, we can only conclude that they risked their lives telling us what they did about Jesus because they knew what they were saying was true. So yes, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Walk by faith and not by sight. Let faith guide your life. But let reason inform your belief in God and in his son who died for your sins and rose again and be prepared always to give a rational defense of the faith. That's my message for tonight. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So, right, and by the way, my right. teleprompter broke. So I did that semi extemporaneously. <laughs> our star apologist, <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> well, there's a uh, two points that I, I was thinking about when you were talking about all that. First of all, the the little catchphrase where it may be cute, but it's really not true when people say, be a Christian because it takes more faith to be an atheist. Well, that's not really true because faith is being certain of what you do not see and what you hope for. And that's the definition of faith. And like you said, science backs it up. And, you know, where science is inaccurate at times and, and tries to be against the Bible, go against the Bible it always ends up catching up and, oh, big surprise, it uh, lines up with what the Bible already says. So um, that's for sure. And then, like you said, I mean, it's good to explore our faith. I think that every believer should do that um, in in that sense. You know, there's certain things. We have finite minds, so we can't, um, you know, we don't know how or, or we just have to trust. But it's good when you when you go on that trail of reason um, you, you discover a lot of things. And I remember uh, reading something from Mother Teresa, who was a woman with an immense amount of faith, but 
she was questioning God and, and, and what was happening in her life at a certain time. Uh, and so it was very encouraging to me because sometimes people tell you, oh, if you're, you know, questioning God and, and going through that part of, in your journey, uh, that, that that's a bad thing. But actually, like you pointed out, it's a good thing because you're, it, it brings you closer to the Lord. So very awesome, awesome thoughts on all of that as usual. So thanks very much. All right. Well, um, I know I went long with my introduction there, but could you uh, please uh, lead us in prayer now? Absolutely. Thanks, dear. Lord, we love you more than anything, more than anything this world has to offer, God. We love you. We honor you. We worship you. We come to bow down at your feet. We come boldly before your throne. We come, we come to sit at your feet and just, and just love you and hear what you have to say, and just be still. Lord, there's so much going on around us, and the most that's going on around us is the things we can't see. Just like this virus, the, the germ is what we can't see, the, the, the threat is what we can't see, so it is in the spiritual realm. The weapons of our warfare, however, are not carnal. But God, you Help us pull down the strongholds through those weapons. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight with you and with you on our side, God. If you are for us, who dare be against us? With God, we shall do valiantly, for he will tread down our foes. And the God of peace shall soon crush Satan under our feet. Oh, death, where is your, where is your sting? Lord, I love, I love how authoritative you are. You hold all the power and the glory. This world and everything in it, there are people who think they're more powerful than you. There are systems that think they're more powerful than you, God. Oh, but you, Lord. Oh, Lord. You could take down the wicked in an instant, but you are a merciful God, but you are also a just God, and you will not let the wicked win. You have the victory, Lord, over every circumstance for all time. I just pray your protection on, on your people, Lord, throughout this world. There's a lot of people represented that listen to this program, that are in different parts of the world, in different circumstances. And that protection means different things for different people. Some people need physical protection. Some people need emotional protection. Protection within families, within economic protection. But God, we all need spiritual protection. It all comes down to that, Lord. It takes on various forms. Some people feel depressed. Some people feel lonely. Some people feel angry. Some people feel hurt. But God, we know that that's not the root. The root is the not what's not carnal, what we can't see. So God, would you help us, those of us who feel anxious, those of us who feel like we're at the end of our rope, those of us who feel... Whatever everyone's feeling right now, God, you alone know what they're feeling, God. But whatever it is, we haven't fully learned to trust in you. We're gripping that thing with a death grip, and we should be holding you with a life grip. We're gripping that thing. We need to detach ourselves from this fleshly world and put it in your hands, God, and fight against the true, the true enemy. Take the mask off that situation. What's disguising? The enemy's hiding behind a certain situation, a certain, a certain thing in your family, in your finances, in, 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 your, in your mind. The biggest battlefield is in between your ears, your own mind. The enemy's hiding behind all those things. But God, you will crush Satan under our feet. You have the victory, God. So we release. I just ask everyone listening right here, I want you to picture whatever that is 
that is has been plaguing you that's been just tormenting you and tormenting your spirit because the, the enemy is behind that and it may be a very justified just a, a problem that's justified it may be a, a, a sickness someone's sickness but you're worried you're 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 scared you're sick you're whatever it is just imagine it in your hand because really that's 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 what's gripping us and choking us and choking our spiritual life and I just I just want us to all imagine that we're just casting that in. You know, God says to cast all his cares, all our cares on him, for he cares for us. So we just throw it. We cast it on you, Lord, for you care. And we ask, Lord, and we know you already do without us even asking, but God, may you fight on behalf of every person listening, Lord. You are their advocate. May they feel, may they know in the spirit realm that you are fighting. Fight on their behalf. Fight on behalf of those who need, who need income, who need, who need healing, who need restoration, who need, who need a, a new hope and a new future, who need protection, who need love, who need, ho- who need faith, joy, who need purpose, who need to just be uplifted, God, who need to feel your presence, God, fight on behalf of us, God, fight against the enemy, totally destroy him, Lord. Lord, we know that we speak to the enemy. We, I say right now, enough. You cannot have your way, enemy. In the name of Jesus, get your hands off. Get your hands off all these people and, their, and, and the things that are dear to them. In the name of Jesus, By Jesus' authority and power, I command you to get your hands off America, to get your hands off all these nations that are represented, and the whole entire world, to get your hands off our children, to get your hands off our families, our marriages, our our internal issues and struggles, our, our hospitals, our court systems and the confusion and and everything that it breeds. And I speak God's life and faith and hope and peace. And Jesus, we ask you to come in and do valiantly on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Great job, Kristen. All right, guys, let's get to the uh, specific prayer requests. We have a bunch of them. Actually, I'm putting on the crawler right now, Um, but I'm going to do almost, or I'm going to try to get to every one of them tonight anyway, verbally. All right, so let's get started with Dal Saliga, who sends me the longest one. So I'll do her first. Kindly pray over us, me and my family, for our protection and safety from harm, evil, evil doers, evil spells, witchcrafts, diseases, illnesses, and this COVID 19 pandemic. In fact, someone else, uh, Ludovina, also asked that we pray against the COVID uh, coronavirus. So we'll do that too. And Dahl goes on to say she wants us to pray for. A shield for all doctors, nurses, elite officers, scout rangers, health workers, hospital staffs, healthcare providers, other frontliners. With God's loving protection, grant safety and good health at all times, wisdom, guidance, and success in all their undertakings as they perform their noble tasks. Prayers for a miraculous healing and restoration of their health of all COVID-19 infected. Prayers for a comfort zone to all bereaved families and for people to be in good shape, financially stable, and spiritually healthy. Thanks and God bless. That's actually a pretty good prayer right there, doll. I mean, you did my job for me, but God will just, I ask that you honor doll's prayer, that you please protect her and her family from all of the enemy's plans and schemes that you place a hedge of protection around her and her family or him and his family. I can't tell from the name that you uh, please protect all these various frontline workers, our police, our healthcare workers, anybody else involved in, in fighting uh, this coronavirus. And we pray also that you're with, the people who have been infected, we pray that you stop people from getting infected. We pray that for the people who are in, who are infected, that they enjoy a speedy recovery, and that for those of, who have lost people to this virus, we pray that you're with them and with their families, and we pray for everybody's financial stability and spiritual health in Jesus' name. Alexander says, I'm the president of the Somalia Drive Student Union. It's a student movement that seeks to inspire young people in Liberia and give them a hope that they can do better for themselves in this society. Why would the, I don't understand what he's 
part of the Somalian Drive Student Union, and he wants to inspire people in Liberia, which is a different country. All right, well, whatever. You, you understand better than me. So I really need your prayers in making my dream a reality. All right, Alexander. Well, if God's put this on your heart, then we, pr we pray that he gives you all the equipment that you need to make this dream a reality. We pray that your dream and God's dream align perfectly. We pray for this student movement of yours, that you inspire young people in Liberia and elsewhere and give them a hope that they can do better for themselves. Because as we've said, God's hope is to give us a plan and a future. And so we ask that God honors your life here and what you're trying to do, do, trying to do in Jesus' name. Sama says, I'm from Pakistan. My mother's eyes are not right. She can't see. I really want you to pray for her. And Jin Wu says, prayer request, please, for Mr. Nirash Islari. So we're going to pray for both these people. And in fact, one more, actually, I'm going to group this one in. Ray says, please pray for me. My mom is real sick and not feeling and feeling really weak, not able to eat anything, just vomiting since last night. Her stomach's painful. All right. We're going to pray for all three of these people. So first, Father God, I pray. I lift up Sema's mother, who's not able to see. We prayed about this last night, God, that you made it so that the blind could see. I'm reminded of one of the first great miracles in the Bible where the Pharisees are questioning a man who was blind. And they said, well, how did this man do this? And the, and the man said, you know, how did he heal your blindness? And the, and the man said, I don't know how he did it. What I know is I was blind and now I see. And so we pray for that same miracle to be experienced by Sema's mother. We pray for Jin Wu, uh, who sent in a prayer request for Nirash Islari. We pray for both of these people. Whatever it is they're going through, God, we pray for total victory and healing and restoration and abundance in their lives. And for Ray's mother, who's not feeling well, God, we pray that you calm her stomach. I'm reminded of the scene in the Bible where there was a storm and, and Jesus was in the boat and he woke up and he just said to the storm, peace, be still. And all of a sudden the waves are perfectly calm. And the disciples said, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey his word? And so, God, we know that your word alone is enough to calm her stomach, okay, and to cure this sickness and rid her of it. In, and so we thank you for that healing ahead of time in Jesus' name. We have a few here, a few people praying for their country. Uh, Sayel says, please pray for my family in our country, Tonga. Zariel says, please pray for the president of the Philippines, that heavenly wisdom and knowledge will guide him in every decision and for the good of our country. And Nai Whalen says, please pray for Papua New Guinea. So Father God, we pray for all three of these places, Tonga, the Philippines, Papua New Guinea, that their governments are wise, that the people are turned to you, and that they experience, I think, revival in each of those areas. And we pray that these three people who sent in these prayer requests will become lights in those areas and bring many people to Christ in Jesus' name. Sai Liwa says, please pray that I'll find a job. And someone named Mick Roges says, please pray that God will provide me with a new mini sound system for my street and film showing ministry. Please also help me pray for breakthrough for financial struggle. Okay, well, God, we pray for both these people in their professional lives. We pray that Sylvia, Sylvia, I really can't pronounce the name. It's very difficult. S-Y-L-W-I-A, Sylvia, will find the job that God, that you have for her or him or her at the right time and the right price. Okay, that, it, that this person just advances through this job and that the person has a blessing in the job and it becomes the most valuable employee there. And for this person, McRoges, who needs a new miniature sound system, God, I pray that it, it, he says it's a ministry. So I pray this ministry takes off and it just grows like wildfire and he brings many people to Christ and you give him all the equipment he needs. He is, we know that he's fully equipped in the spirit. Now he just needs the electronic equipment also. Nagas says, God bless you for having the burden to pray for others. Well, that is a blessing. You're right. Pray for my wife and I as we need finances to building the legacy center meant to shelter internally displaced orphans, widows, and others fleeing persecution. Now that, my friend, is a calling. And that's something that Krista and I have talked about ourselves. Um, and that takes a lot of faith. And I congratulate you for having it and for doing that. So, God, we pray this is a good work that they will they will build these orphanages. They'll build these places for widows and other people fleeing persecution. That, that their ministry will be like, like a tree with many wide, powerful branches that people will just, will just rest under and find shelter under it. 
God, we pray that this is a good work and that nothing stands in their way and that they are able to overcome any obstacles and that it's a fast work too because people need this now in Jesus' name. All right, and then we just have a couple short ones here. Crisola says, please pray for my financial breakthrough and deliverance from my debts. Indira says, please... Uh, pray for me, my family, loved ones, and friends. I am not well. Dauda says, I am from Nigeria. Please, I need your prayers for my marriage is at the edge of breaking. And Nanaba says, I need prayer for my marriage. Let me do the two marriage ones last. As far as the first ones, Crisola, for your financial breakthrough and deliverance from your debts, I pray that not only will you break through financially, but that you will lend and not borrow, that other people will be in debt to you, Okay. I pray in Jesus' name that God opens the abundance and windows of heaven to you, that you experience a supernatural financial miracle, that you never have to worry about being in debt again. Indira, I pray for your family and your loved ones, and where you say you're not well, I kind of feel like you're saying that's almost like a, a mentally not well, like you're not in a good place spiritually more than physically. But whatever it is, God, be with Indira now. I pray for her friends as well, um, but I pray for her and her family. I pray for her in particular that you just you give her a sound mind and a clean heart and you you walk very, very closely next to her so she can feel your presence and you can just rebuke whatever it is that's causing her not to feel well in Jesus' name. And for Dauda and, and Na Naba, who ask us to pray for their marriage, we're going to do that. I'm going to tell you this, though. There's no substitute for you praying for your marriage every day, morning and night, at least, with your partner. Okay? Kristen and I pray every morning and every night. I don't just mean even on this show. I mean, even when we're done with this show, we go and we pray again. Okay? So, and that's, we're not even married. So, so it's critical, critical, critical. But I don't want the, the enemy to get the victory in either of your marriages. So, Father God, I pray in fact, more than that, because the, the word breaking here is really standing out to me. I pray that Kristen and I here will stand in the gap of doubt as marriage, okay, to prevent it from springing a leak, to prevent it from crumbling. I ask everyone listening to this to join us in this prayer, to just come against the enemy's plans, okay, to just restore this marriage to where it was, to give both of these people, doubt and doubt as partner, a spirit of forgiveness and a spirit of repentance and a spirit of unity and a spirit of growth. Kristen and I talk about a love triangle between herself, myself, and the Holy Spirit. That's really what you need. A marriage is not a two-person relationship. It's a three-person relationship. And the third person is the Holy Spirit. Kristen knows that better than anybody. Believe me. In fact, she was talking about that. In fact, it was last night, weren't you, Kristen, saying, you know, God, tighten this triangle up. I think that's what you said in last night's yes. prayer. And so, God, I pray um, that Kristen, I pray that Kristen, I I pray <laughs> as pray Kristen prayed. Yeah. As Kristen prayed that you create just a love triangle with these people. Okay. Where you're the third member and you tighten that triangle up to restore their marriages in Jesus name. All right. Let's go to the people who are just typing in now. First, I want to say hi to Naresh Paul, who's watching us from India. Okay. Hey. Nice to see you. Nelson says, I want you to please pray for my daughter for her epilepsy to be healed. I remember Jesus healed a child who had epilepsy as well. I wonder, is, is Kristen, was that the one where Jesus did it through fasting and prayer? I forget. I don't remember. But in any event, Father God, we pray for Nelson's daughter that she doesn't have to live with ep epilepsy or cope with epilepsy or anything like that, that the epilepsy will just be healed. And yeah, we're, we're thankful for doctors. We're thankful for anti-seizure medication. OK, and, and if that's available to her, we hope she gets it and we pray that's available to her. But God, I also pray she doesn't need it because there's no reason she has to be a prisoner to sickness. So, God, we pray and we lift up Nelson's daughter and we commit her life to Christ. We just pray for an end to these seizures in Jesus name. Georgia Oliveira says, love these messages. Thank you. Please continue to pray for me and my mom, Rachel Pinks in New York. Well, Father God, we pray for Georgia Oliveira. And her mom in New York, we pray, well, in New York is, of course, the heart of the coronavirus right now. Father God, we pray you keep them protected. We pray you keep them safe. 
and we pray that there are light in New York because New York is a really dark place. There's not a whole lot of uh, Christian activity taking place there. But God, we pray that you make Georgia and her mother great evangelists there. All right, Cheryl from last night again um, asked us to pray for her son, Dave Tim Kang. Cheryl, we prayed for you and your son last night. I don't know if you saw the episode. You can watch it again. Um, but we absolutely, we absolutely pray for you and your son. I think this was the one you're we talking about headaches, if I remember correctly. And she says something and she says, I am sick and my son Dave is sick. I don't want you to think of yourselves as sick anymore. You guys are healthy people who are just going through a sickness and you're going to come out on the other side of it. Okay. So we prayed for you last night, but, but father God, just again, keep Cheryl at the forefront of your consciousness and deliver her healing for herself and her son in Jesus name. Howder LinkedIn says it's five 30 AM where I am. So someone got up early to watch us. Thank the Lord today that I joined with you. I am thankful for that. Prayer request. I am praying for a partner for Bible study so that I can spend more time with God. I hope I will get it soon. Thanks for your message. Excellent, excellent prayer. My goodness. Excellent, excellent prayer. All right, so let me do, let me tell you this, Halder, since you are tech savvy that you can watch this at 5, 5.30 in the morning. In addition to getting a prayer partner, um, I'm going to advise you to go download the Through the Word app or just go to throughtheword.com, I believe. It's a great uh, a great website. You can do daily devotionals through it. But as far as a personal partner, you know, the Bible says it's not good that man should be alone. And thank God I'm not. Um, so, Father God, we pray that you send Halder a partner uh, who can study the Bible with him. Before I met Kristen, God put it on my heart, and I didn't even know it was happening, to pray for a partner who loves the Lord above all else. And I got that. And uh, Halder, I pray that for you as well. Kristen, why don't you take one? Here's uh, Raj says, please pray for our ministry in India. Who's watching right now. Do you want to pray for that person? Sure, sure. Lord, we pray for Raj and the ministry in India and all the ministries in India. Um, I know I have a lot of missionary friends in India and um, in that part of the world. And Lord, I pray for them and, and all these people and all, all the listening that they are lights. Lord, that you would break strongholds in India. That you would break, break um, the persecution. That you would protect, protect our Christian brothers and sisters, and help them to bring in more Christians. And uh, the poverty, Lord, stop the poverty and and uh, bring your light and your help and and bring bring the seeds that were laid many years ago. May they sprout up and, and like a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tree, like the cedars of Lebanon. May they sprout up newness, new and, and new truth in that land and bring a new revival. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great one. All right. We've got Vets. Here, why don't you take another one, Kristen? Vets Kanawali says, please pray for healing for my heart, brain, and high blood pressure. All right. Vets, we pray, we pray for healing on your whole entire body. By his stripes, you were healed. And I pray against the anxiety that your that this sickness has has brought you because um, that it seems like that's part of the vicious cycle. So, Lord, we pray we pray against that. Lord, we pray we pray right now that his entire body would start functioning the way you intended it to function. Lord, would it his body line up with the will of God and everything in his mental and emotional emotions and anything causing any worry or anxiety would just cease and he would rest in your arms, God, and you would bring healing, God. You would bring healing from the top of his head to the bottom of his, his foot. And just like Jordan always says to take communion, we, we certainly say, Lord, if it, um, that he would take communion and, and feel your healing and your peace just overtake him. And even now, even now, in Jesus' name. Amen. In fact, on his profile picture, Kristen, I don't know if you can see it from your screen, but on his picture, he's got the verse. It just says Psalms 91, which says, if you, and I'm sure you know this, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I Amen. will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And he ends with, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. What a perfect, Amen. perfect prayer for vets. Because yeah. God, because vets loves you, you will rescue him. A, a, amazing. Thank you, Vets. Great job. 
Yes. And one of our big fans here who watch us every night, Florita, asks us to, to pray for the whole world for peace. You know, the Bible says we'll always have wars and rumors of wars, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't pray for peace as well. In fact, I think Matthew 5, 7, is it not, says, blessed are the peacemakers, yes, before they yes. will be called children of God. So, Father God, we just pray. In fact, I'm going to do something a little bit different, Kristen, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm going to pray for world peace also. We pray for peace between nations, but I pray also for peace within households, okay? Mm, yeah. Between married yeah. couples, between parents yes. and children. Yes. I pray for inner peace for each of us as well, mm -hmm. because a war yes. rages in our minds. I pray for peace for that as well in Jesus' name. There's yes. no reason we can't have that. Yes. Let's do one more prayer, and then we'll close this out. Kristen, um, Kristen Lee Mondahar writes, please pray for me. I'm sick with high blood pressure and for the safety of my family and the whole world. And just pray for her, Another, please. Yes, and and just to dovetail, it's it goes along with the peace. That verse, my peace, I give to you. I do not give as mm. the world gives. I give to you. May we receive the peace. And I pray that for um, Crystal Lee. I pray that you would feel God's peace because the enemy wants you to think that you are imprisoned by this sickness, but God has conquered it for you. Amen. God has yep. a purpose and a hope and a future for you. So I just pray right now that you literally feel God's hands on on you and that you mm -hmm. literally feel. I feel like you need to know, like you, I feel like you need to feel God just totally envelop you and and give you that peace and and just rest in him and know that he has done it and believe yep. it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Excellent, excellent job. I think the public wants Kristen to do more of these individual prayers, and I think we have to give the public what it wants. So we'll start doing that. We'll figure out a way to um, – there are technical limitations that we're dealing with right now that prevent this that. This is my we'll audition tonight, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you passed, man. It was awesome. Good for you. All right. Well, listen, prayer warrior, do me a favor. Um, guys, this is the most important part of the show. This is where Kristen leads us in the call of salvation. Listen, even if you are already a Christian – Listen to Kristen here because she you can memorize what she says and then simply just bring other people to Christ as well. Okay, guys? So here you go, Kristen. Take it away. All right. Well, if you don't know what we're talking about when you talk when we talk about that peace, if you've never experienced that, or you or you maybe you have and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, or when Jordan was talking about uh, just the whole crux of Christianity, and you're wondering, should I, should I? This is your chance. Why would you wait? I, mm -hmm. This is your chance to accept Jesus. You, you don't know what tomorrow brings. And this is the time that you can start living your best life. So follow after me. Dear Jesus, I admit that I have sinned. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. You pray that prayer. We're so happy for you. Um, leave a comment on this video, or you can also send us a message. Absolutely. Hey, guys, listen, not to brag on my own little mini sermon, but if you just joined us late and you didn't see the beginning, it's one of the more important messages I think that we've done. It's about really defending the faith. It's not enough just for us to understand things for ourselves and to, and to, you know, grow in Christ ourselves. We're called to convince other people of, of God and of Jesus Christ, his son. So if you didn't get a chance to watch the beginning of the video, again, all of these get uploaded to Facebook. So as soon as this is over, it'll process and you can watch from the beginning there. Uh, I think it's, it's a really important message. Again, that's not to brag on me. I'm just saying, I think it's, it is that important. All right, guys, listen, do me a favor. Like and share the videos, please. Invite your friends to like our page. We're up to 30,000 followers now. Thank you guys so much. It makes me so happy when I get these messages while we're doing this to say, you know, good morning to you. And it's where we are. It's 8 o'clock at night, but I see people saying good morning. And it's 530 where they are. And it means so much to us that you guys wake up early to, you know, spend your morning with us. And it's really very encouraging. And thank you. And that's why we do this. We don't get paid in money, but we get paid plenty in 
and the blessing that you guys are to us. So thank you so much for that, guys. We'll see you tomorrow again at 730. We'll be coming to you live or not live, but recorded anyway from uh, Casa de Kristen. OK, in the <laughs> meantime, guys, uh, please be blessed and be a blessing. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to follow Jordan and Kristen Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes. And remember to tune in next week and every week on Tuesdays at 845 on WMCA The Mission, AM 570 and FM 102.3. Amazing grace.